Hello and welcome to uh, lesson two of unit 1.5 which is all about network topologies, protocols and layers. Last lesson we looked at the different network topologies, uh, mainly star and mesh topologies. If you haven't watched that I would recommend going back and doing that before doing this. Uh, it's not 100% necessary but uh, yeah, it would be worthwhile. So what are we going to do today? So let's have a look at what we did last time. We looked at different types of networks. Today you're going to uh, learn how IP addressing, MAC addressing and protocols support the access to the network. Okay. Um, so they're the kind of three things that we're going to be looking at today. We've already touched on IP addressing in previous lessons and I have very briefly mentioned protocols uh, and so Hopefully this should now just kind of be a, a deeper dive into those ideas and not something that's radically new to you. So we want to understand what the main IP addressing, MAC addressing and protocols are, be able to recall a range of protocol acronyms and explain what some of the protocols do. There are, I think, six or seven protocols to understand and be able to explain. Um, and so that's uh, what a lot of this lesson will be around is kind of researching and understanding those. So, to return to our network definition that we've kind of, that has kind of been running throughout these these lessons, a computer network is a number of computers linked together to allow them to share resources. Network computers can share hardware, software, and data. Remember also that connected devices can be printers, tablets, laptops, or a webcam. So you can share lots of different devices other than just other computers. Okay, so. I'd like you to spend one or two minutes, uh, ignore the second bullet point where it says share and copy down other words from other students in the class. Obviously you can't do that unless you're, I don't know, FaceTiming someone while this is going on. If so, then great, um, share. But um, I'd like you to spend two minutes and maybe make a little spider diagram of all the words that are related to networks. Put networks in the middle and uh, if I make a brush here, That. So something like, oh dear, that was a bad circle, networks, and then all of the different words you can think of coming off here. Now I've jumped onto this spider diagram, this is probably going to give you a lot of ideas, so I'm just going to flick back. So you're going to think of all the words that are related to networks and uh, just spend a couple of minutes on that. Okay, so pause this video here and complete that. Okay, so now that you've made that spider diagram, what I'd like to do is take five words from that spider diagram and write a simple definition of each down. Once you've done that, use the internet to find the definitions of three of the words that you do not know. So if you have any words that you're not quite sure what the definition is, um, outside of those five words that you did know, then um, use the internet to find those definitions and put a definition down in your book. Pause the video here, complete that, and then join me on the next slide. Okay, so these are our key words for today's lesson. So IP addressing, MAC addressing, and protocols. So an IP address. An IP address is a unique string of numbers separated by full stops that identifies each computer using the internet protocol. That's what IP stands for, internet protocol, to communicate over a network. They are similar to a postcode that is used to identify a house in a county on a street. So the IP address identifies is, is kind of in, in a similar vein. Now, every IP address is unique on that given network. You, so you couldn't have two computers sharing the same IP address. So this is an example of an IP address, 192.168.1.23. And in my last video, I did a little bit of binary and explained why this number can never, why each individual number, so why this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here could never be greater than 255 um, to do with the 8-bit binary numbers that they're made out of. So if you haven't watched that, I'd highly recommend going back and watching it because that's quite important. Um, so this is a example IP address and you should be fairly familiar to you by now. Okay, so using the website, what is my IP address? You can literally just Google that and it will tell you. 
um, rather than going to the website. Um, and just type into Google what is my IP address and it will come up and it will show you your IP address. Um, obviously, if we were at school, you would all be on the same network. And so when you Google what's my IP address, what you would get shown is this IP address, your public IP address, not your computer's individual private IP address. And so if you were at school and everyone was doing this, you would all be getting the same IP address coming up because it would be telling you your public IP address. And so when it says it might might be the same as another student's, why? And um, that is kind of an answer to that. No, it's not very, <laughs> it's not going to be the same as anyone else's if you're doing this at home. So uh, this question is kind of redundant. But if we were at school, we would have this public IP address popping up when we're Googling what is my IP address, not these private IP addresses of each individual device. Uh, and that would be the same for everyone connected on that network. What class is the IP address? Now we're going to have a look at IP address classes in a minute. So make a note of your IP address and then we can look up what class it is in just a second. Oh, don't want to do that, I want to do that. Um, so data traveling on the network is sent in packets and packets are just small parts of the overall data. So if I wanted to send an image, I don't send an image as it is over the network. What I do is I chop it up into things called packets and um, those packets are sent to the to the destination in kind of little chunks of that image rather than as one big image. And we're going to go over kind of packets and what they are in the next lesson and in more detail. Uh, each device on the internet has a unique IP address which is sent with the packets to identify which computer to send the data to. The address is broken down into four numbers which can represent a number between 0 and 255 separated by a full stop. And here are the classes. So IP addresses also have different classes which identify the class of network that the user is on. This indicates the number of total possible users and the purpose of the network. So the uh, the you can tell what class your network is in by looking at what the first byte, so the very first number that your IP address starts with, you can see what it falls into, which class it falls into. Now I'm pretty sure my IP address falls into class A. Uh, maybe yours would be the same, not sure. Um, but yeah, if you've found your IP address from the last activity, uh, just check the first byte and see which class it falls into. Um, it probably won't tell you much, but then you could maybe, uh, once you've found that, you could research what that class is and uh, why yours would fall into that. So maybe let's just delve into that and have a quick look. So if I come back to, where's Google? There's Google. Okay. Uh, let's just, there we go. Uh, if we go into here and I type in what's my IP address, so you can see there, this is my IP address, 86.8.159.187. So my IP address starts with 86, which is a class A IP address. So let's do class A IP address, and let's have a look. Class will network. Okay, let's have a little look. Class A. Uh, it's not really telling me much about it. Okay, so A, B, and C provide unicast addresses for networks of three different network sizes. Class D is for multicast networking, and E is a reserved. Okay, cool. Since it's discontinuation... Okay, um, maybe this hasn't taught us as much as I thought it would, but let's go back to here. Um, so that's IP addresses. So a MAC address is different from an IP address because a MAC address identifies hardware whereas an IP address can be configured to, you could kind of, in our diagram here, I could get my router to pick the computer's IP address. 
and I could change this five to a six if I wanted to, if I wanted, or a ten, or um, I could dynamically assign IP addresses depending on whether the device is online or offline. So only certain IP addresses are being used at one time, and so the IP address can change over time of your device. What can't change is its MAC address, and its MAC address is something that is unique to the uh, to the hardware. And if your device has a NIC, a network interface card, then that in network interface card comes with a MAC address that is built into it. And this allows you to identify different devices so you know what device is what. Now if you have a Windows computer, you can locate your MAC address by going to the start menu, typing CMD, and then typing ipconfig slash all and the MAC address will be listed as physical address and you'll be able to find it like that. Um, I am on a Mac, not to be confused with a MAC address, they're unrelated. Um, so if you're on a Mac, you need to open up a terminal and I'm just gonna type in ifconfig where the Windows users would have typed in ipconfig and I'm gonna press enter and I get all of this jargon and what I'm interested in is ENO. And we can see here that this ether, that is my MAC address. So 9801A7AD3A01. What number system do you think this MAC address is written in? Is it using a number system? Well, it is. It definitely is. So what number system do we know that has numbers and letters? Hopefully, <laughs> you said hexadecimal. And you'd be absolutely right. So um, these are using hexadecimal numbers in order to represent this. Um, so that's my MAC address. And you can also check it in settings as well. So if I go to system preferences, I can go to network, advanced, and hardware. And here we can see MAC address 9801A7AD3801. So it's exactly the same in here as well. So that is my MAC address on my Mac. And you can find this, you can do the same on Windows to find your MAC address. And this is what is uniquely identifying every device with a network interface card. The network interface card has the MAC address built into it when it's manufactured. And it is a unique number. Um, it's embedded into the device and, and you, it cannot be changed. Um, and it's made up of 48 bits. So if we have a look here, we've got an 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit, 8 bit, and 8 bit number. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 8 bit numbers, and 6 times 8 is 48. So that's uh, a 48 bit number that makes up your MAC address. And it's usually written in hexadecimal for ease. Um, because computers find it a lot quicker to transfer between binary and hex, and it's also easier for humans to read. Oh, uh, why would it use hexadecimal over binary? So um, this is an example MAC address, and it uses hexadecimal as a number base. I have just told you why it would use hexadecimal over binary, because it's easier for humans to read. Um, yeah, so when you're trying to compare MAC addresses, it's not going to melt your brain having to look at all the different ones and zeros and compare them. So protocols. Network protocols are a set of rules or conventions which control the communication between devices on a network. So uh, that's absolutely it in a nutshell. Okay, if Protocols are just a set of rules that allow communication to happen. If we don't know how to communicate properly then it's going to be inefficient and so the device at each end before something gets sent, they need to agree on a certain protocol so that they know what they're listening for and what they should be uh, receiving and in what order and how it should come about. And there are a few different ways that you can send data. Um, so these are the key protocols. We have transmission control protocol over internet protocol or TCP over IP. That's slash standing for kind of over. And um, we've got hypertext transfer protocol, which shouldn't be new to you. Uh, we have hypertext transfer protocol secure, which also shouldn't be new to you. And that secure, remember, is relating to this uh, secure socket there. Oh, I thought we had it in our diagram, but we didn't. Okay, so hypertext transfer protocol. We also have HTTPS, which is our secure socket layer. Uh, FTP, which is file transfer protocol. We have post office protocol, which is POP. 
Uh, these last three are all about email, okay? So these are just tra protocols for transferring email. So we've got POP, we've got IMAP, Internet Message Access Protocol, and we've got SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So these are the protocols that you need to know and understand. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, now, HTTP and HTTPS, we already know about, and we're fairly happy with them as it stands. So um, I would say that there's, it's less daunting. Uh, IP, we already kind of understand, so it's just this TCP we need to get ahead around. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. Really can't go wrong with that. That's for transferring files. Uh, and learning the difference between these three mail kind of uh, protocols is going to be the biggest challenge uh, out of all of this, out of remembering all of this. Everything else is pretty straightforward, but just remembering uh, how these three how these three differ in terms of using email is really important. And so that's something that you'll need to bear in mind as we move on to this, which is activity two. I'd like you to, um, I'm going to put the slide back in a second on those protocols. I'd like you to briefly research the purpose of each protocol and write them down in your books. You're then going to choose one of the protocols and create a poster which explains to the reader what the po protocol is, what its features are, include a diagram and examples. Um, and it says share these posters with other students. Obviously, we won't be able to share them until we get back to school. Now, if you would like to do this by hand, but on paper, that's absolutely fine. If you'd like to do it digitally, that's absolutely fine. If you do it digitally, I would like you to upload it to Google Classroom onto this assignment. If you do it by paper, um, I'd like you to take a picture of it and upload it to Google Classroom. Okay, And then um, you can bring it in when we're back to school and you can show it to me. That would be fab. Um, so yeah, I, that is what I'd like to do now. Now I'm going to rewind this slideshow back to the list of protocols and you can see them there. You can pause this video here and then you can complete the activity. And then uh, once you're back, we will finish the presentation. Okay, so pause here. This is the activity. And we'll be back once you have done that. Spend about, spend a good kind of 20, 25 minutes on this. Okay, cool. So you're back. Well done for completing that activity. Your poster looks awesome. Um, well done. <laughs> uh, so hollow, isn't it? But but yeah, but yeah, it looks great. I'm sure it does. Believe in yourself. I believe in you that it does look great. Even though I recorded this in the past, I think I've, I've got enough faith in you. Um, so hopefully you've got the you've researched the purpose of each protocol and written them down in your books, and then you've chosen one of the protocols and you've created a poster for it. So uh, I would like you to watch this explanation video on IMAP versus POP3. This probably would have been helpful a second ago, but hey ho. Um, this will be included in the description of the video for you to go to. Um, do you know your protocols? So, TCP over IP. I want you to say it out loud to your computer. What does it stand for? Okay, now HTTP. Okay, keep saying it out loud. HTTPS, what does that stand for? Come on, louder, I can't hear you. FTP, what does FTP stand for? Okay, good. POP, what does POP stand for? Good. IMAP, say it out loud. And last one, SMTP, what does SMTP stand for? Okay, so hopefully we had... TCP over IP as transmission control protocol over internet protocol. I'm sure you were shouting that at your screen, no doubt. Um, HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. And obviously, if you know that one, then the next one's really easy because we just add a word. So HTTPS is hypertext transfer protocol secure. Uh, we then had FTP, file transfer protocol. Uh, we then had POP, which is post office protocol. IMAP, which is internet message access protocol. And we had SMTP, which is Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. So they are all the protocols that you need to know. You should by now have a kind of a brief explanation of the, each of them in your book from the last activity we just did. And now what I'd like you to do is I have uploaded the table to Google Classroom and it looks something like this. And I would like you to fill out all of the blank cells 
for its name, so its abbreviation, its full name, what it does, and when you would use it. Okay, some of them have been complete, completed for you because I was feeling nice, um, but you will have to complete all the other cells. So um, you've got 10 minutes, you can use your notes to help you, you can ask for help if you are totally stuck, and um, it, this compare your answers thing doesn't really translate to outside of the classroom, but if you are able to, to if you're kind of on a, a call with someone and you're able to compare answers, then great, um, please do. So pause the video here, take 10 minutes to complete this activity, and then join me on the next slide. Cool, well done. Um, make sure you handed that in on Google Classroom. Uh, now the last bit of the slideshow here, we just have a BBC online test for you to take. So uh, a link to this will be posted on Google Classroom for you to go to easily. And uh, if you kind of click onto it, go onto the, the test and see how well you do. And that is it. Have a lovely day and I will see you in the next lesson. Sweet.